Like I could feel the, uh, like the mucus build up in my lungs. Like millions of other Americans, 26-year-old Clay Byington tested positive for COVID-19 after gathering with friends and family over the holidays. When the coughs came, it definitely sent the aches down the body. Were you quite worried about how sick you were getting? I was pretty worried. Um, I, I see a lot of stories about how people's health has declined very fast, you know, in a matter of days. I know that me being overweight um, just kind of worried me. Despite being boosted, Clay's BMI of 35 placed him at higher risk. So Clay's doctor prescribed him Paxlovid, an antiviral that has been shown to reduce hospitalizations by nearly 90% among those at highest risk for developing severe disease. They're a game changer and have the potential to dramatically alter the impact of COVID-19. Paxlovid is a combination of oral pills that work by interfering with the virus's ability to replicate. Based on Paxlovid's high efficacy, the 20 million courses bought by the Biden administration could eventually prevent more than a million hospitalizations based on CNN's calculations. But the problem is this, the majority of those doses won't arrive for months. There's hardly any of these pill packs around. Dr. Eric Topol is executive vice president for research at Scripps in San Diego. He believes the Biden administration should have invested in Paxlovid months ago. Had we had hundreds of millions of of blister packs of Paxlovid right now, we'd be able so much better to fend against Omicron. Several months before the vaccines were authorized, there were at-risk investments being made, many bets being made on various vaccines, and you know, those are gambles. Were those same sorts of gambles made on, on therapeutics? The fact that this was the first medication that was designed specifically against this virus that, um, I think, was worth a shot. It was worth an investment, but there was none. So far, just 160,000 courses have been delivered around the country. And with more people currently hospitalized with COVID-19 than at any other time during the pandemic, these pills will soon be in short supply. They will need to be rationed. Maybe challenging. Leaving um, doctors okay. like Sharisha Danaretti at the University of Washington's Harborview Medical Center with some tough decisions. We're using these medications judiciously and really giving them to the people that m would most benefit from these therapeutics. If we open it up to vaccinated individuals, we would not have enough therapy. Should a vaccinated person get it versus an unvaccinated? Or should it only be for unvaccinated? I mean, it's going to raise all kinds of ethical and medical sort of questions. The availability is so limited and more people who are unvaccinated are going to wind up uh, in need. The National Institutes of Health guidance prioritizes treatment for those at highest risk, the immunocompromised, the elderly, and yes, the unvaccinated. Many of the people who are seeking this therapy may not need this therapy to recover um, from COVID-19, and is particularly if you're vaccinated, boosted. There are other treatments available, but remdesivir, an antiviral, and sotrovimab, and monoclonal antibody both require infusions, and monupiravir, another oral pill, is the last line option being recommended. None of them as effective as Paxlovid. Yesterday, my cold wasn't as worse, and today I'm feeling a lot better. Clay was one of the lucky few, getting both physical relief as well as mental relief from the drug. Once you're sick and you're, you know, you're you're feeling the, the, the symptoms and you're, you're kind of like, oh my goodness, is this going to get worse? So that kind of, the medication helped alleviate that stress and anxiety. Dr. Sanjay Gupta, CNN, reporting.